Really appreciate you getting on. It's this good meeting to see that is being we... recorded. Sorry about that. I've got my recorded message. Uh, it's good to see so many people on so early. So thank you. You know, I do want to welcome everybody and uh, thank thank you all for attending. As you all know, this year was a pretty difficult year. I mean, I actually started my year by attending the funeral of our uh, good friend and brother on committee, uh, James Sweeney, uh, which quickly led to a lockdown which meant most of us were not uh, not prepping for our first or second quarter meeting. But I would say that the state, um, our agencies, our bureau, you know, moved into action as, as this industry was deemed essential and did a lot of great work to try to make sure that the industry could function during these difficult times and uh, kind of set back the, the, the merger of the three agencies into one in 2020 and pushed it to 2021. Uh, that gave us a great opportunity to start looking at how our committee could make recommendations. So in 2021, hopefully as we move out of this dark period of our country, uh, we would have um, an agency prepared to address the challenges of this industry and to the consumers of California. Uh, the other thing that uh, this year has brought to us is challenges for many of the people on this committee and we've had a few committee members uh, resign because of either changes in their assignments or other commitments that they had which is also a challenge and then that was dealt another blow when we uh, got the re uh, we received the announcement that our bureau chief for the bureau of cannabis control was retiring um, I'd like to take a moment to thank Lori Ajax for all the great work she's done, not just for the Bureau of Cannabis Control, but for all of her years working for the state of California and the different agencies that she's worked for. She, she stepped in at a time where um, we were taking an industry that had been unregulated for the most part and tried to address regulations and enforce regulations to allow this industry to succeed at the same time while protecting the consumers and including addressing the concerns of people who may not be so supportive of the industry. And that's a difficult task. And she had to do that uh, working with two different agencies that uh, function differently and trying to make that so that it was a smooth operation. And so uh, I'd like to take a moment and really thank Lori for her commitment to the state of California uh, to the industry which she was assigned to assist in the legalization and regulation of, and especially to our committee. She was always very supportive of our committee and helpful to our committee, and so she will be greatly missed. I hope and that her retirement is long and her health is, uh, you know, great, but I don't think any of us expect to not see Lori on, um, somehow involved in assisting us as we deal with these challenges going forward. Uh, I do also want to recognize that, you know, we've had a tremendous state staff in all three groups, uh, BCC, CDFA, and CDPH, uh, tackling the challenges as this has come forward with the uh, COVID crisis and helping our committee um, work through the challenges which were crammed into a five-month period versus our normal year period to do our work. And I do want to particularly acknowledge uh, the work of two committee members that have continually stepped up to meet our obligation to create a draft. And that would be uh, committee member Kristen Nevidal and Beverly Yu in their uh, preparation of the draft uh, year end report that was done. So with that, I'd like to see if uh, we could call our meeting to order and could our moderator please call the roll. I'm taking roll now. So Babulian. Here. Thermac. Here. Farrow. Present. Heidelbach. Here. Harada. Here. Huffman. Committee member Huffman, are you here? Lynch. Here. 
Nevdal? Here. Peck? Here. Ron? Here. Stevenson? Buenos dias, aquí. <laughs> Todd? Here. Williams? Here. Woolsey? Here. Wu? Here. And you? Here. Form is established. Chair Farrow, I'm turning it back over to you. Seeing, excuse me. Chair Ferry, I think you were muted when you were talking. Chair Farrow, you were just muted, so I don't know if you were talking, but you were, have been muted this entire time. I've unmuted you now. Thank you. I asked if there was any comments on the minutes as written. Alice, how can see you? Good morning, Alice. Hello. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're on agenda item two, and we're asking if there's anybody on the committee that has any um, comments on the agenda minutes as written. I mean, the, excuse me, the, the October 30th meeting minutes is written. And seeing none, I'm looking for a motion. And uh, I'm sorry, this is this is uh, committee member Cermak. I had my hand up, I thought. Um, can I make a comment? Yes, committee member Cermak, please do. Um, my comment is just that uh, perhaps it's because of my solely because of my visual difficulties, but I think we're all fairly busy people. And uh, I did not receive the minutes or the draft with sufficient time to prepare um, properly for being able to make final comments on either one. Um, so there's a couple things that I would have prepared um, to, uh, to comment on, but I just did not have the time to do it. Thank you for your comments, committee member Cermak. Um, we will try to do a better job of getting these turned around quicker. Unfortunately, because of the year that we've had and the cram number of meetings we've had in a five month period, uh, being able to turn around a draft document as important as the one that was crafted by Ms. Nevidal and Ms. Yu, uh, I don't think we had sufficient time for us to get it out much earlier. Any other comments or statements? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes as written for the October 30th meeting? This is committee member Nevinal. I will move that we approve the October 30th minute meeting or meeting minutes. Thank you, Ms. Nevinal. Can I have a second, please? This is member Heidelbach, I'll second. Thank you, co-chair. We have a motion and a second. Can I open up to public comment? Um, committee chair, you actually have a hand raised by committee member Clifford. 
Very good. I'll call on committee member Clifford. I do not see his hand raised. Is he in the lower attendee portion? Let me. I see that he actually oh. has just joined us. Let me go ahead and get him promoted. And he is now a panel member. Very Thank good. you. The only reason I was raising my hand was to, to, to call that to your attention and just to give a heads up that I have a conflict today. So I'll be in and out of the, I'll be out of the meeting between 10 and noon, but we'll join as, as much as I can. Thanks. Thank you, committee member Clifford. So seeing no uh, additional comments by committee members, I'm going to open it up to public comment for uh, comments directly related to the minutes as written. This is your moderator and at the direction of the committee chair, I have opened the Q&A panel for public comment. If you would like to make a public comment, please submit. I would like to make a comment and send to all panelists. Your comments will be addressed in the order that they are received. You will be provided one minute to make your comment and given a 30 second warning. An individual identified as Eddie Franco has a comment. The floor is yours. Hi. Hi, uh, can everybody hear me? We can. Thanks so much. Hi, committee members. Eddie Franco with the California Cannabis Industry Association. Uh, my comment will be very brief. Just wanted to thank this committee uh, for all the hard work that's been done this year. Um, and for the great work on the report. It's been a super crazy year. Uh, lots of unexpected twists and turns and a lot of difficulties. So just wanted to appreciate, uh, take some time to thank and appreciate the continued work that's been done by this committee. Thanks so much. It does not appear we've received any additional requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Please, moderator, thank you very much. You're welcome. Feature has been closed. So, although I concur with the uh, comment last person, uh, I think we are prepared to take a vote because I don't believe there's anything actionable out of that comment. So, uh, can I please have the roll call on the motion? Bobolian? Aye. Thermat? Nay. Clifford? Aye. <coughs> Excuse me, aye. Farrow? Aye. Autobot? Aye. Harada? Aye. Huffman? Lynch? Aye. Nebdal? Aye. Peck? Aye. Ron? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Todd? Abstain. Williams? Woolsey? Aye. Wu? Aye. And you? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to agenda item number three, which is um, discuss and possible <laughs> action regarding cannabis. Pardon me? Excuse me. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the Cannabis Advisory Committee's annual report. We have a review of the final draft for the committee to consider. I would ask that um, if we could have either or both committee member Nebadal and committee member you walk us through uh, the 29 page uh, report and cover the highlights if that would be possible. Uh, Chair Farrow, if I may jump in really quick. For attendees yes. who would like to follow along with the report, if you go online to our website at bcc 
www.cmsf.ca.gov or follow the link in the agenda, you will be able to bring up a copy of the report under meeting materials. Thank you very much, Kayla. I'll give people a moment to look that up before we start. Would committee member Nevadal or committee member you wish to start with walking us through the the thought processes and the creation of this draft document for consideration? Mr. Chair, I'm happy to kick us off. This is member you. Thank you very much, member you. The one question I had and I want to post this to the committee before we get started is, do we want to take 30 minutes as we have had in the past for folks to review the report in case there wasn't time to do so before this meeting? Um, Council, do you have any um, recommendations how to address that issue or opportunity? Yeah, if this is counsel for the bureau, if we would like to take a 30 minute break to give people a chance to review, that's fine. Um, if the committee members are ready to discuss it, we don't, we can go forward. That's up to you. Well, my thought would be is that we walk through it. Um, we don't put it up for public comment if we can do that. We'll move on to the other parts of the agenda while um, while people are reviewing. Yes. Alice Huffman does have her hand raised. Oh. Committee member Huffman. Committee, Committee member Huffman, this is the moderator. I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Thank you. Um, I want to go back to uh, uh, agenda item. I, I hate for Lori to leave and not have the committee members tell her we, we appreciated her and she did a great job and we're going to miss her. So I'm sorry I get that out of sequence, but I want to make sure I'm on record. Thank you, committee member Huffman. I'm sure Lori appreciates that and I'm sure she's listening. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll give a moment Thank before you. we close the meeting for anybody who wishes to make a comment on the committee, um, if that's permissible by our council. Yeah, so we, that, can. we can do that. Thank you, Ms. Coulson. Um, Again, my thought was that we could walk through this and people could follow along as you as you and Ms. Nevidal go through the the document, and then we could um, move out of order to deal with whatever else is on the agenda. And if we need additional time for individuals to complete the review, uh, we could consider that, and then we could open up to committee member comments and public comment at that time. But if you walk through it, it might help individuals who are gonna be looking at this document for the first time, identify where obviously there's some unique pieces to this um, document, specifically to the COVID-19 canvas efforts. That sounds good, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Member you here just wanted to begin by saying that member Nevidal and I are grateful for the committee and state and the public's confidence and the opportunity to put the report together. The continuity of having our writing subcommittee over the past three years has helped us out tremendously. And before I give a high level overview of the report on behalf of this committee, we wanted to thank everyone who took the time to provide feedback to enrich the committee process. So we appreciate all your thoughtful responses. 
And we would echo Chair Farrow for your comments earlier and wanted to thank the state licensing authorities, staff, leadership for your hard work and the critical role you play in ensuring the success of the cannabis market. And finally, we appreciate the engagement from our committee members and hope we capture the discussions and recommendations accurately in this report. So for the report, we have it broken down in five sections. The first section is a letter from the committee. The, sec the second section is a committee recommendations. Third section is on presentations. Fourth section is addressing global issues. And finally, we have acknowledgements. Do we want to begin with the letter and I can walk through this, Chair Farrell? That would be tremendous, thank you. Great. So the purpose of this letter was to provide context and background on the significant events and actions that happened this year that may have informed the adopted recommendations. And we also want to acknowledge the state's work. In the background uh, of the letter section, it covers California pre-pandemic, COVID-19 related events that have folded early this year and protections the governor put forward. Then we move along to the budget section, which covers postponement, postponement sorry, of the proposed January proposal, the work that continued, and final budget canvas related provisions. Then we have COVID-19 cannabis efforts. And this section includes information on the relief efforts to alleviate the challenges that the cannabis industry and to help sustain access. Next, we have racial justice and social equity. This section highlights systemic racial disparities, the need for greater investments to be directed towards community of color, especially communities most harmed by the war on drugs, includes information on the equity fund and community reinvestment grant allocation. I'll hand it over to member Nevidal to cover the wildfire section of the letter. Thank you very much. This is committee member Nevidal. Um, the wildfire section um, um, is a, a kind of a review and a, a um, overview of the extreme wildfire season we had this year, um, but also um, it talks a little bit about the wildfires, um, California's largest wildfire, the August complex, which um, really um, was in an area or a region of the state where we had a lot of legacy cultivators. Um, and also the um, licensing authorities for their quick response time and support in navigating emergency regulations as there were um, multiple licenses or licensees throughout the state impacted by wildfires this year and had to engage in um, emergency evacuation of facilities, crops, and whatnot. Um, with that said, I will turn it back over to member you to um, review the conclusion. Thanks so much. So the conclusion wraps everything up and acknowledges the administration's role and the committee's commitment to continuing our work. Next, we have the recommendation section, which I will pass it along to Kristen to cover. Thank you. Um, Member Nevidal here again. Um, so the committee recommendation section is organized in a manner that is chronological. So um, we have a brief introduction into um, just kind of over outlining um, how the meetings this year were moved to an online platform um, via executive order, but that there were still ample opportunities on the online platform or teleconference platform for public engagement. And then we move directly into the recommendations. And as I mentioned, they are in chronological chronological order, so they follow the agendas. Um, in each recommendation section, um, the intros into the recommendation sections for each of the supply chain topics um, are taken largely from the background materials provided by the licensing authorities for each section. Um, and then we get into the sub sections for each topic, right? Um, and so if we look at licensing requirements as the first section, um, the subsection definition of owner and financial interest holder is taken out of the meeting agenda. 
And the question posed to the committee, which appears in each subsection, is also taken directly out of the background as a way to help us frame in this report what was brought forward for the committee to discuss. Um, within that, we have captured each recommendation that was made, um, as well as um, the status of the recommendation, um, which really boils down to whether the recommendation passed or failed and what the vote count was on said recommendation. Um, so we have done this all the way through. Um, I do want to point out just a couple of things here um, that we, um, in keeping this chronological, um, we addressed the initial comments or questions brought forward for manufacturers. And then when we came back as a committee to discuss inhaled ingredients for a second time, um, that conversation is in a standalone section in the recommendations, um, as is the final um, high or impacts on high THC conversation when it was agendized the second time. Um, I hope that this isn't too um, long-winded of an explanation. Um, and I think that um, I, for the sake of um, uh, trying to walk through this, I'm thinking that maybe I should pause or we should come back with questions. Um, but I just wanted to create a little bit of a framework and help the committee members understand and the public understand um, where the content came from. So it's largely from the backgrounds provided to the committee. Um, and we tried to really stick with um, the background, the questions provided, and then um, any recommendations that were made, as well as the status of the recommendations that were made. Um, one additional thing I think that might be helpful to point out is that on pages 20 and 21, um, in the recommendation related to impacts of high THC consumption, um, we did capture that there was an initial vote for um, this topic that was an 11 to 0 vote um, approving a recommendation for a report, and then um, also recaptured the final recommendation. So um, we tried to include the information showing that we had um, an initial vote, and then we had to re-agendize the item and bring back for a second vote and further conversation. So we did include those um, two components in that section. Um, so with that said, I think I'll leave it there and um, pass it back to Beverly for, oh, I have the next couple of se sections too. So my apologies. If I, um, if I may. If yes. I may. Uh, no need to, you're, it isn't long-winded, you're capturing 40 hours of meeting minutes <laughs> into a document so that way it covers the highlighted work that we've done and the input that we've received from the community as well as counsel from our uh, licensing authorities as we move forward. So thank you again. So no yeah. need to apologize. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Chair Farrow. Um, so in the presentation section, which is the next section after recommendations and starts on page, let's see, I scrolled back up. My apologies here. Um, begins on page 23. This is a very short section. So um, this section really just talks about the fact that we had two presentations scheduled. Um, acknowledges that the United Core Alliance presentation was postponed for next year, but still um, lists the title of that presentation as well as um, our um, uh, agendized presenter. Um, and then also notes the track and trace um, presentation that we received, what we received, and the presenter for that presentation. Um, with that said, um, member Yu is going to. Um, complete um, or at least talk about the global issues and so I'm going to pass the floor back over to her and we will continue our overview. Great. In the past we had included a global issue section where we would house overarching issues but because of the pandemic we weren't able to agendize and discuss some of the unresolved issues brought up in previous years. Um, but for us to ensure that we were maintained the information and could provide an update, 
we modify the global section to become the addressing global issues section. So in this, we provide a legislative update, which includes six cannabis bills that was signed into law this year. We also included a regulatory update detailing the QR code regulations to help consumers differentiate between legal and illicit products. It includes the application programming interface, um, as well as CDFA's regulatory work on both the OCAL program and the Canvas Appalachian program. And finally, in this section, we included information on, on local Canvas initiatives and legalization efforts nationwide. I will turn this over to Ms. Nevidal to cover acknowledgments. Thank you, Member Nevidal here. And um, in the acknowledgments section, we had previously put these at the beginning of the report. And um, for the purpose of this report, we put them at the end for closing. Um, we have um, included many thank yous um, in the intro into the acknowledgments section. Um, as we greatly appreciate all of the action or active participation of subject matter experts, local officials, business leaders, patient advocates, labor representatives, veterans groups, compassionate use collectives, industry specific organizations and members of the community. Over the years, um, this has been, um, it's been really um, a treat to have so much participation um, in the committee itself. Um, we covered leadership um, and also in that leadership section, acknowledge um, the secretary and deputy secretary for the California Business Consumer Housing, I'm sorry, Consumer Services and Housing Agency. Um, in the Bureau of Cannabis Control section, we um, have uh, um, adjusted um, Acting Bureau Chief, um, well, Tamara Colson's new title. Um, congratulations. And also um, at the close of that section, um, have a brief or inserted a brief thank you to Bureau of Cannabis Control Chief Lori Ajax. So um, we do have a short thank you in there for her and her services. Um, and then we move on to California Department of Food and Agriculture, um, where we have a listing um, of staff that has been crucial to the Cannabis Advisory Committee. Um, as we also have the same section um, with staff crucial to the Cannabis Advisory Committee um, from California Department of Public Health. Before we move on to our final acknowledgement section, which is the Cannabis Advisory Committee members, um, we list all of the active members first and then included a short um, remembrance of James W. Sweeney. Um, and then an acknowledgement, we close the report with an acknowledgement of former advisory committee members, um, thanking them for their service, and then list the committee members um, who have resigned over the course of this year. And that closes the report. Excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, with, you know, that, I mean, I'm sure there will be questions by the committee members and by the public why don't we move on um well why don't we do this um rather than move into discussion and possible action for future meetings or uh, public comments on items not on the agenda uh, why don't we take a break um i don't know if 30 minutes is necessary since uh there was a walkthrough of this but uh i see a lot of hands raised so maybe I'm wrong, but um, you know, I would think that we'd go on a, a 20 minute break and then reconvene with possible comments, but seeing some hands from both committee members, Huffman and Woolsey, uh, I will recognize uh, committee member Huffman. Committee member Huffman, is this a uh, hand raised from your earlier wishing to um, recognize the service of Bureau Chief Ajax? Why don't we move on then for the moment to committee member Woolsey? I see committee member Woolsey and committee member Lynch have their hands raised. Committee member Woolsey. Hi, thank you. Uh, I do have comments about the report, but I'll save those for after uh, the break. 
But for the break, I wanted to let the moderator know I will be dropping out of the meeting and rejoining on a different device. If you could look for me to re-promote me to committee member, our panelist, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, committee member Woolsey for that information. Committee member Lynch. Thank you, Chair Fair. Farrell, um, I too have questions and comments on the report, but I do have a question um, that I'd like to be able to cover during break is it, there was reference to a document um, pertaining to the high THC inhalant um, section. And I, I don't see that. So I'm just wondering um, if that's something I should read at break or if that's something we don't have access to yet. Kristen or Beverly, do you have uh, a response um, to that question? This is um, Member Nevidal, and I perhaps misspoke, but um, there are no accompanying documents um, associated with the report. So um, the high THC section within the report begins on page 20 and um, continues on to page 21. Um, my um, comments or um, explanation does note that in the beginning of that section, um, towards the end of page 20, we do capture the first uh, motion that was approved for this item, um, along with the vote for that first motion. Um, as folks may remember, we had the item re-agendized after a concern was expressed that the September 25th agenda did not clearly indicate the advisory committee may take action on the item. So um, the final motion is captured, or final recommendation is captured on page 21. Um, with the vote um, of 1100 noted in the status. Um, but we do not have any additional supplemental documentation associated with any aspects of the report. Thank you for that clarification. Does that uh, address your concern or interest, um, Committee Member Lynch? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm scanning again. Um, one last time, committee member Huffman, uh, your hand is raised. Is that for this section or is that for uh, prior hand raising? Could. Um, this is the moderator, um, committee member Huffman. I have unmuted you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can, mine is for the report also, so I can wait. Very good. So why don't can we, uh, unless there's any, unless there's any um, interest otherwise, why don't we break till 10.05 and uh, reconvene, and then we'll open up to committee members' comments and this is counsel for the Bureau. I just wanted to mention that if any of the committee members would like to make a statement to Chief Ajax during the discussion on the report would be the appropriate time to do so. Thank you, um, Acting Chief Wilson. Okay, so let's this break. This is counsel now. for the Bureau. Beg your pardon? This is Sarah Gardner, counsel for the Bureau, oh, not Acting oh, Chief Cameron Coulson speaking. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, sorry. I could speak for her, but I just think it's I just think it's wonderful that we have uh, two additional counsel plus our our, our Acting Chief has uh, spent a little time as counsel, so we are counseled up for, for whatever challenges we may face. So, all right, thank you. With that, we'll we'll go on break till uh, ten oh five, and um, look forward to getting back and discussing this. Thank you. Ten oh five. I'd like to see if we could take a either a roll call or by showing a hands. Um, 
to ensure that we have a quorum before starting. There we go. I see some hands raised. A showing of hands, could uh, each individual that's on the committee show that they are present? Ms. Huffman? Committee, me committee member you? Yes, here. Very good. Committee member Harada. Committee member Stevenson, are you present? Thank you. This is the if you can please just keep, members keep your hands raised. Don't um just keep them raised Lower. so that I can count, please. All right. Thank you, committee member Woolsey. Committee member Stevenson, can you re-raise your hand for us? Thank you. Committee member Nevidal, or if you're present, please raise your hand. Thank you, committee member Peck. Committee member Ron. Raise your hand, please. Leave it up. Committee member, Sir, committee member Sermak is here, but I can't raise my hand. Very good. Thank you, committee member Sermak. Thank you, committee member Todd. Com committee member Ron, are you are you back from recess? Please raise your hand. Chair, this is the co-moderator. You do have quorum, so it is up to you if you want to continue or to wait for additional members to join. Well, could somebody uh, open committee member Huffman's mic so we can verify? I know that prior to the break, she had said she wanted to make some comments and was willing to wait. Wait a minute, hang on, Robin. I don't want to. This is the moderator. I don't want to make a. Committee member Huffman is on. Yes. You're on okay, I don't want to make any comments. I changed my, I changed my mind. I, I'm not making comments. Very good. Thank you. Did you hear me? We did, mm -hmm. committee member Huffman. Thank you. Thank you. Moderator, could you please mute committee member Huffman's mic? Thank you. All right, we have a quorum, so I'm going to reconvene the meeting and anybody who wishes to make a comment, uh, please leave your hand raised. I see committee member Wu. Uh, recognize you. Sorry, taking it down. Okay, committee member Woolsey, I, I know you also had your and raised earlier to make a comment. I look forward to hearing what you get to say. Uh, thank you. I wanted to uh, first start with um, thanking the committee members for preparing the report. I appreciate the conciseness of the report and I found it uh, easy to read and easy to follow. So thank you for that. I also appreciated the um, many acknowledgements uh, at the end of the report, including uh, acknowledging Lori Ajax for her service, as well as uh, James Sweeney and uh, in remembrance of him. Uh, my only comment pertains to um, in the committee member section, I am an enforcement representative and a sergeant of the Division of Medical Marijuana Control with the San Jose Police Department. Um, we had changed our name um, a little while ago, removing the term marijuana and its negative connotations and renamed ourselves the Division of Cannabis Regulation. So I'd request that that be changed in the report. Um, and then coincidentally, that's also what's shown on the website. So in a different forum, if we could change the, 
the website to reflect um, my division name, I'd appreciate it. Um, otherwise, I thought the report was well written and easy to follow. So thank you for that. Thank you um, for your comments there. That's well, well received. Uh, Committee member Todd. Sorry, I, did, I just had my hand remaining up from when you were calling attendance. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. Uh, I see committee member Cermak has his hand raised. Committee member Cermak could. Um, Thank you. I did find out how to raise it. Um, I also really appreciate the uh, the effort put into the the thoroughness and the clarity of this report. Just just really well done. Um, I like the uh, the sections on the uh, legislative. Uh, uh, issues that have been dealt with around here. And I'm wondering if there could be uh, another small section on uh, pertinent lawsuits. Uh, for example, there's a, a, a lawsuit which in which the court found that um, the regulations regarding billboards um, are in conflict with the state statute. And uh, we earlier, uh, we being the, the CAC, uh, made a recommendation in the previous year that uh, that those uh, regulations be changed to reflect what's in the statute. Um, so I think there are some lawsuits like that 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 might be an additional useful section. Thank you. Hey, this is counsel for the Bureau. I just want to clarify regarding the litigation that is not final yet, so it's still ongoing just for the committee's reference. Thank you for that. I would imagine there's probably, having having worked around this industry since 2012, I would imagine there's probably significant amount of uh, litigation that is um, either pending or moved through that would be, but if there are any significant ones that uh, have been resolved and that are impacted directly by the work that the committee's done, it would be good to capture that. So if there's any anybody on um, the state that could identify that for us, that would be great. Thank you. Let's see, do any other committee members? Uh, I, uh, committee member Cermak, your hand is still raised, so I would assume that's a residual. I'm going to move on to committee member Lynch. Uh, committee member Lynch, your hand is raised. Thank you so much. Um, I too want to thank everyone for the work that was put into this report and appreciate that it acknowledges all the important contributions of various um, folks here. Um, it was very well laid out in my opinion and was very clear and easy to read. So I appreciate that. I'm going to make a general comment and then a couple specifics. Um, one, I just, just in terms of the report and what it reflects, I think, you know, the mission of this committee as mandated by the state is really to protect public health and safety while ensuring a regulated market. And I think this report focuses a lot on the regulation of the market and less on the public health. And I think that's illustrated um, if you look at, um, and the reason I had asked uh, the question about the um, addendum or reference to additional is that the report, um, you know, particularly in the THC, high content THC and inhaled products, there was robust, robust discussions um, about that uh, subject matter. Um, and it's, it's really not reflected um, in the document. I think um, there's, you know, were, were references to studies, there were references to um, the need to continue this discussion, and I feel like that isn't necessarily captured in here. Um, one other um, mention of um, the, the grants, I think there were, you know, millions of dollars of grants that were given, and it would be really great to see um, those kind of listed out, um, because that's important work and good work, and I think uh, reflecting that in the document would be um, good. Uh, additionally, um, in the the reference to um, items and topics um, that continued to come up is, you know, there was um, 
a lot of reference to um, committee composition and committee members. Um, you know, that's not really reflected in here. Um, and then, you know, while I know it is um, certainly no one individual's fault, I do have to say that getting the report, um, which is truly like two, three working hours in advance of this meeting, um, you know, was a bit troubling for um, me to provide the full kind of um, length of, of comments and reflection on the important work that I think we've done. But um, overall, you know, the, the work of the committee has been great and really do value and appreciate everyone's contribution to this report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, committee member Lynch. Committee member Stevenson. Yes, I, I would like to thank the entire. Committee, uh, the BCC support staff. As well as the public, in addition to the great leadership of. Our former cannabis czar, Lori Ajax, that was, uh quite an accomplishment uh, what she and her team took upon and success, successfully moved the world's largest cannabis market forward. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, including myself, uh, being an operator, wasn't always happy with it, with some of the things <clears throat> that had taken place. However, I, I, I would like to say that under her leadership, I will I will say that navigating this market was and has been successful, and we have an, a we do have a foundation presently to build from. I would also uh, like to thank Tamara for the work she's done and uh, welcome her in the new leadership position. And I look forward to another successful year working with everyone. Thank you. Including you too. Thanks. Thank you for your comments, committee member Stevenson. Committee member Woolsey, uh, your hand is raised. Is that still from your last comment and the clarification in your title? Yeah, sorry, my bad. No worries. No. Co Chair Heidelbach, recognize you. Thank you, Chair Farrow. Um, I also just want to take a moment and thank Lori. I think that um, <clears throat> she took on quite a task and she did it with grace. And I think that that's not an easy thing to do. She was always a pleasure to to work with. And, uh, you know, she worked um, a long time for the state of California and I, I uh, I think she did a great job and I hope she really enjoys her retirement. I hope that we get to see her <laughs> again soon as well and that we can continue to um, to benefit from her direction. Um, I also wanted to welcome Tamara. I think that's um, wonderful. I know she worked really closely with Lori, so um, I just wanted to extend um, that. And then I wanted to throw it out to the group if anyone is interested in I, I really agree with member lynch in that there's so much to digest and i want to thank um both member nevidal um and and beverly member um and beverly as well for the work um that they put into this and it looks like a phenomenal report but i definitely would like some time um to digest it and really kind of because this is a reflection of, of the group, um, I agree with what member Lynch stated that, you know, we really need to, to take public safety uh, into consideration um, as we complete our work. But I would like to, if we're gonna have a robust discussion and a proper snapshot of uh, our work, if anyone would be open to discussing this report since we see we we're meeting what monthly now chair farrell it seems so if we have the time would anyone be open to discussing the report in depth in january 
Our only challenge, uh, Vice Chair Neva. Uh, sorry, we have so many Kristens. Um, <laughs> uh, Buck, I'm sorry, Ms. Nevadal. No, um, we, we do have a we do have an obligation to have this done by your end, if I'm not mistaken, okay. Council. All right. Yeah. That said, we you know I guess we could try to cram another. Um, um. If I could interrupt, this is council. I would just like to remind the committee that we do have to have this finalized by the first and to get it processed and posted and everything, it does take some time on our end. So I would just request that you keep that in mind as you're making plans yeah. to move this forward. I was just gonna say, I guess we could try to do something, but we were kind of in a weird box right now because uh, we do have you know, the noticing requirements Anytime we get together to meet, and we have the review process necessary, you know, and uh, to go through the different, you know, through council and everything else, uh, the governor's office. Uh, every uh, there's a lot of people who review these so they can participate if they choose to. Um, so it is it is a challenge. Uh, you know, we yeah. do have today block that you know if there's discussions that need to be made right now and changes. Um, I think committee member Nevidal, are you trying to respond? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Farrow. Um, this is committee member Nevidal. So, um, you know, we have had a couple of conversations, um, member you and I, about um, timelines on the report. And it is a challenging timeline. Um, we had talked about suggesting that as we move into 2021, we consider selecting our report subcommittee much earlier in the year if possible. Um, we feel that um, this would allow the report subcommittee to um, get the work going before say October or late September, which is traditionally kind of looking back on the timelines when we start the process. Um, there is not just a kind of scouring of the meeting minutes and the transcripts to um, bring the information forward that we've covered um, over the course of a year. There's also um, doing research as we put together the background and the conclusions and any other additional sections of the report. Um, global issues in the past um, definitely has taken additional um, research support. Um, so I, I can see some benefits in doing the selection of the subcommittee earlier. And um, also, um, you know, I, I sympathize receiving a 29 page report, um, 24 hours or less before a meeting is challenging to digest. But um, I'd also like to address just um, a couple of the concerns, if I may, um, that have been expressed. Um, the report, um, you know, in writing the recommendations sections, um, I generally over the years, member you and I have broken up the um, subcommittee sections. And again, like in previous years, we've had these topics put in front of us with a whole day to discuss and hear public comment and really work through each of these items. And this year we did it as a group. Um, there were a number of items that came before the committee this year um that we had heard in subcommittees discussed in subcommittees had um subcommittee recommendations come forward that were similar to or almost um, um identical to um items that came forward this year and recommendations that the committee made this year and um as i was again trying to navigate putting together materials for the recommendations section it's it started getting incredibly unwieldy we went down the path originally of trying to capture the 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 dialogue, the sentiment, the the broader sort of actions the committee as a whole has taken with its subcommittees and then the recommendations for this year. Um, and it got so unwieldy um, that we felt it um, much more appropriate and simpler um, and readable to really focus on what had happened this year. Um, and these are the recommendations that were put forward. They were um, 
a lot of considerations. I want to remind folks in these recommendations were specifically brought forward because consolidation is up and coming. Um, so they do have a heavy regulatory overtone um, with a short amount of meetings this year. Um, the focus really ended up being on consolidation and I think advising the licensing authorities and the administration as to um, what they might focus on addressing as we move into 2021. Um, and, you know, adding additional information to um, any of these areas really felt like we had to kind of do it for all of these areas. Um, I do want to say about the grants program, we had talked about putting into the report a section um, specifically about the $30 million in research grants um, issued to um, UC grant proposals and different UC schools. Um, that information is long. It's a lovely long list of proposals that were um, awarded grant funding. So what we did is we referenced that um, grant program on page 21. And at the bottom of page 21 is footnote number nine, which provides readers of the report with a link back to the Bureau's announcement of the grant proposals that were funded. So they can see the list. It's just not in a section. Um, so um, we were a little concerned about the length of the report as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that folks realize that it is um, available in the report, even though we don't list it. Um, and we do capture, um, we say grant receipts. So the last two paragraphs, my apologies, on page 21, um, the last two paragraphs before the recommendation that was approved say grant funding recipients. It, it provides some of the background that um, we did talk about these grants, um, that um, recipients were um, um, that there was $30 million allocated and that the recipients were formally announced on November 13th and that they fall within one of several specified categories, including public health, criminal justice and public safety, economic um, and environmental impacts and the cannabis industry. And then we have the footnote right there uh, provides the link to the details. Um, Committee composition, um, again, I think, you know, for um, the sake of drafting the report, it's, it's hard for me personally as a drafter to get too conversational. So I'm, I'm not sure, you know, it's, it's hard for us to kind of know exactly what to include, kind of scour through the minutes. Um, we didn't have um, committee composition agendized. Um, and in the past, um, items that aren't necessarily agendized um, have been a little more challenging to capture and include in the report just as a whole because um, it starts getting um, kind of more based on perhaps the drafter's opinion than <laughs> being able to really pluck like these actions happened out of um, the meeting minutes. So, um, I will yield the floor, but um, I hope that those responses help. And I am um, more than happy to answer questions about any of the recommendation sections. And I'm sure Member Yu is also happy to answer questions about any of the sections that she um, kind of more directly um, wrote. So thank you. Thank you, Committee Member Nevidal. Uh, Committee Member Woolsey, are are you, do you have comments at this moment? I do, thank you. And it's really a question more for council and that's relating to the purpose of the annual report. Um, it's my my understanding, and I, and I very well could be wrong on this, that the purpose is to summarize uh, what the committee has done for the year, not to restate all of the discussion um, that happened on each of the items. Uh, those are captured by the previous minutes and uh, the meetings themselves. So I just wanted to verify that that's, that's the purpose of the report. And if that is the purpose of the report, I found it to be a very fair and concise uh, summary and I'm happy with it as is, as long as there, I, I didn't see any factual um, things wrong with the report, I, but I thought it summarized it very well. And if there are other things that happened throughout the year 
um, that are captured in those meetings, I, I don't know that they necessarily need to find their way into the report itself. Hi, this is council. Um, Member Woolsey is correct. That is the statutory mandate for the report to summarize the committee's actions over the year. Thank you, council. And yes, that's, uh, I was going to say that's true too. So, um, yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Vice Chair Heidelbach, your hand is raised. Yes, sorry. Um, I wanted to just address. Um, member Nevidal and state that I hope that my comments were not taken as critical. I think that the report is um, really well done, but she nailed it when she said that they uh, really tried to craft the report in a way where it wasn't necessarily opinion um, or desires on behalf of a few of the members. I know that while we all um, enjoy each other's company on this advisory board, we come from different areas. And so um, I just wanted to reiterate that. Um, and that's also why I kind of wanted to take the time to be able to go through um, the document a little bit uh, with a little more time. But I understand the time constraints. I, I get it. Um, so um, I'll go ahead and yield the floor. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Um, Committee Member Lynch, I, I see your hand is raised. Yes, just two comments. Um, certainly, uh, you know, feedback on the report. I don't. I, none of mine was construed to be criticism. I just think it's, you know, important that um, because we do all have such uh, good working relations here that we speak freely on um, issues of the report. Um, and second, I would just raise um, a, a minor detail. Um, my title in the report is wrong. So I am Kristen Lynch, a member of the uh, labor organization representative, um, but my title is strategic director of service employees international union, no longer at local 10 to one. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Lynch. Uh, we should celebrate that when we get a chance to in person at some point. So that's awesome. That uh, kind of wraps it looks like of <clears throat> committee comments. I do want to say that, you know, I did plan you know, as the chair, I get to appoint subcommittees. The nice thing is, is the one thing that was pretty evident as we jammed into this is that it would be nice to have a subcommittee that re works regularly on putting together this report um maybe have meetings in between regular meetings and since we are able to do webex meetings now it's possible hopefully in the new year we could have a subcommittee a standing subcommittee for dealing with our annual report that would allow more than two people to participate and allow public comment as the port reports being drafted and then at the end of the year have a final presentation of that report that has allowed both um committee member participation throughout the year and um, participation of the public as we move forward through the year. But exactly right, this is a, the goal is this, is to capture the overview, overarching view of the activity we've made. And I do think that the two committee members, it is evident that they've been our writers since the beginning because the evolution of this report and how it's constructed, in my opinion, was fabulous. Um, we may disagree with how what should have been in and shouldn't have been in, but I think anybody who would look at this would be able to look at references, be able to go back and look at the minutes for the meetings where it was discussed, and be able to find that there was an accurate reflection of the work that was done. So again, uh, my my comments are uh, thank you very much for the work you've done uh, on behalf of this committee and that you continue to do. And all of us on this committee had put in some good work throughout the years to try to put together the the information that was necessary to, to construct this report, as well as the staff's um, support as well. I and I did make a comment on uh, Lori, and I do really wish her well. I do, I didn't have an opportunity to congratulate uh, Tamara for her new role, and I really look forward to working with you. You have been fabulous uh, to the committee and myself as we've moved through this difficult year and the prior years as well and we really look forward to working with you as this consolidation occurs i can't think of a better person to help us through that process so with that i'll open it up to community comment 
This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to make a public comment, please. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Hi, this is council. I just wanna remind the committee they haven't made a motion on anything to take public comment on and at the, this time, I also wanna remind the committee that in the past, what we've done with the report is taken a motion to give authority to our subcommittee to make any changes based on this discussion today and then any technical changes that may need to be made in the report to get it finalized. So just remind people, we do usually do that, to make a motion to include, um, to provide authority to that subcommittee to make changes that do, don't change the substance of the report. Absolutely. No, I, you know, I know sometimes we take a, the motion in advance of public comment and sometimes we take the motion after public comment. Should yeah. there be anything raised that the public, uh, this seems to be significant enough to allow us to have public comment to inform the committee and maybe yeah. make a modified motion, but absolutely the plan would be to request a uh, motion in a second that would include non -substantive, substantive changes to the report. So that way the work could be done to make this public at the end of the day. So that was the purpose of letting it go to the public before we actually had a motion in the second. Yes, that's great. And they can make comments now and we can discuss further. Thank you. Um, so I would open up the uh, panel for the public comment at this time. Thank you. This is the moderator. I have opened the Q&A panel for public comment. If you would like to make a public comment, please click on the Q&A icon located in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and type, I would like to make a public comment. You will be provided one minute to make your comment and given a 30-second warning. Once your time has elapsed, your microphone will then again be muted. With that, I do have an individual identified as Wade Laughter. Your microphone has been unmuted. Yes, thank you. My name is Wade Laughter with House of Harlequin. Um, I shared with the committee members uh, how uh, quickly one had to scan the report, but I, I think I find it a very fair summary of what of the committee meetings I have listened to. So, um, and I wanna thank all of you for service um, uh, and recommend that you adopt the report as written. Thank you. No, I'm just done with that report as soon as I vote on it. This is the moderator. It does not appear we have any, um, I take that back an individual identified as Kelly McCormick. Your microphone has been unmuted. I'm McCormick. I'm a parent and I run a youth group. Um, it was an after school group. Now it's online to support kids with um, educational needs. And I want to just um, comment on the report that I agree with the comments um, that it should have more emphasis on the questions that were raised, especially by the public and other committee members about the high THC levels and the desire to study the effect um, and perhaps even limit the high THC concentrates and flavored um, marijuana concentrates. We are doing such a great job in the state of you know banning flavored tobacco and um, I don't see that marijuana flavors is any different in terms of attracting youth. It attracts youth. And I'd like to see that reflected in the report as well. Our next public comment comes from an individual identified as Ray Purs. Your microphone has been unmuted. Thanks. Um, I didn't see anything in the report. I just started reading reading it. There's I didn't see anything in the report where the committee addressed any of the social equity concerns. Um, so if there is, someone can let me know that. Uh, and if isn't, then I think next year that needs to be uh, really looked at because the social equity um, business owners I'm talking to, 
the no interest loan part is just devastatingly horrible. 30 seconds. Devastatingly horrible. So I would want the committee to really look at uh, the social equity because things are not going as planned. Thank you. Next, we have an individual identified as Jackie Subek. Your microphone has been unmuted. Hi, thank you. My name is Jackie Subic. I'm a consumption lounge licensee in West Hollywood. Uh, I just want to thank the committee for putting together such a thorough report, including their understanding of the needs of a consumption lounge to be able to sell non-infused food and beverage to its patrons. This single recommendation is critical to the viability and hopefully success of the lounges. And we look forward to seeing this recommendation in the 2021 draft regulations. Um, additionally, I want to thank the committee for hearing the comments on the request uh, to extend the hours of operation. Um, I understand that nobody on this committee wanted to even touch this one, but I want to encourage the committee at future meetings to reconsider, to reconsider their position and recommend that an agency amends this section to expand the hours of operation to allow for an up to 2 a.m. closing time as decided by local control. Thank you so much. Next, we have an individual identified as Max Mikulanis. Your microphone has been unmuted. Good morning, Max McAlinas here. I'd like to thank the committee for the thorough and impartial report. I uh, greatly appreciate the detail put into the recommendations um, and the effort and time above the committee this year. Um, one thing I'd like to emphasize that was a comment made by Eddie Franco at the last he committee hearing was um, you know, a desire for inclusion of the 2018 and 2019 recommendations, um, given those touch on some pressing issues that uh, were not addressed by me this year, such as you know, the issues around taxes, market access, and social equity, um, things that were intended to be addressed but were not addressed. So an inclusion or reiteration of the previous year's outstanding issues would be appreciated. Thank you for your time. At this time, it does not appear we have any additional requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Thank you, moderator, and thanks again for the good work you're doing. Thank you. Feature has been closed. So we've had some public comment. Uh, I appreciate the public's comment on, on the draft report. Uh, do we have any additional comments by committee members or a motion in a second? This is committee member Woolsey. I would move that the report be accepted uh, as written with the following two changes. One would be uh, changing Division of Medical Marijuana Control on page 28 under my uh, assignment to the Division of Cannabis Regulation. And I think it was Ms. Lynch's title also changed, although I don't remember the exact wording that should be used. And also to give uh, the authors of the report, the sub subcommittee of the report, um, the ability to make technical changes to the report after this meeting and before publication uh, as needed without changing the substance of the report. Could you adapt, uh, modify that the, the committee members and staff so that way we have the opportunity for staff to be able to make those non -substantive, substantive changes, please? Absolutely to include staff. Thank you. Do I have a second? So this is a second by Matt, Ron. Thank you, committee member Ron. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Seeing none, I guess we open back up to public comment for uh, additional comments on the motion and the second. Fair, fair. Can I, this is the co-moderator, can I clarify the motion before you move to public comment just to make sure I have it? Absolutely. Okay, committee member Woolsey, I have the motion as accept the report as written with changes to your title and committee member Lynch's title and to give committee members of the report and staff to make technical changes as needed. That would be correct. Council, would that be uh, acceptable based upon the recommendation that you were making prior to us going to public comment? Yes, that is. Thank you. Excellent. So with that, I'll open back up to public comments since now there is a motion that 
they can make comments to? This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I have opened the Q&A panel for public comment. If you would like to make a public comment on agenda item number three and the motion before the committee, please feel free to type, I would like to make a public comment by clicking the Q&A icon in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Again, you will be provided one minute with a 30 second warning. Committee Chair, it does not appear we have received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Yeah. Feature with has that, been closed. I would, thank you, moderator. With that, I'd call the roll, please. So I will repeat the motion one more time. So the motion is that the committee approve the report as written with changes to committee member Woolsey's title and committee member Lynch this title and give the committee members of the report and staff to make technical changes as needed. And with that, I'll go to Bo Bullion. Aye. Sir Matt. Moderator, if you can unmute Dr. Sir Matt, please. Committee member Sir Matt, what is your vote? Aye. Thank you. Committee member Clifford. Committee member Farrow or Chair Farrow. Aye. Vice Chair Heidelberg. Aye. Parada. Aye. Huffman. Aye. Lynch. Don't hear me. Lynch. Sorry, committee member Lynch. Aye. Thank you. Nevdal? Aye. Heck? Aye. Ron? Committee member Ron? Oh, aye. Thank you. Stevenson? Todd? Aye. Williams. Woolsey. Aye. Wu. Aye. And you. Aye. Motion passes. Very good. And again, thank you for the great work on that and uh, for all the good comments by the members of the committee. Uh, with that, we'll move on to discussion and possible actions on items uh, for future meetings. Um, and as you all already heard that I'm gonna um, recommend that we, well, I'm gonna establish a subcommittee uh, to deal with uh, reports, drafting of report. So any other comments by committee members for future actionable items for future meetings? Chair Farrow, I have my hand. Yes, is that committee member Lynch? Correct, thank, thank you. Member Lynch, thank you. Sorry, it's no problem. Um, so, for future items and in, in response to the comment um, made at public comment, I think um, addressing some of the uh, statewide equity programs and uh, standards, as has been raised, I think, at other meetings, would be um, a great future agenda item. Thank you. And if you recall the last meeting, we extended the invite to the core Alliance to do their presentation at the first meeting of our 2021. And uh, I have since talked to the uh, new director of that and they're prepared to do that. So I think that'll be a nice addition for our first meeting of 2021. Any other recommendations or comments? This is committee member Cermak. 
Would it be appropriate to ask uh, CDPH to provide an update on any action they're taking uh, regarding the uh, recommendation we have for uh, setting up a uh, study group of the literature on high potency THC? It would. Um, what I can do is I can check with CDPH to see if they are far enough along to make a presentation and an update to the, the committee early 2021, and we'll get them on as soon as they have something to report. Uh, committee member Nevidal. Yes, thank you. This is committee member Nevidal. Um, I'd like to request that we um, receive a presentation from the licensing authorities, um, helping us to better understand the provisional licensing numbers um, and why provisional licensing is still necessary um, or what the timeline might be to process those provisional licenses into annuals. Um, I have significant concerns with the provisional licensing program slated to end at the end of 2021. Um, and right now it appears there's very high rates of provisional licensing in all three of the licensing authorities. Um, and I just have concerns that this could pose challenges to the legal supply chain um, and potentially undermine the program and then um, inevitably strengthen the um, unregulated market. So. Um, I thank you for letting me make that request. Thank you, Committee, committee Member Nevidal. I have it duly noted. Seeing no other comments, um, I'll open it up to public recommendations for future committee um, agenda items. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I have opened the Q&A panel. Committee Chair Farrow, before I start taking any um, public comments, I did see that Beverly Yu raised her hand and then lowered it. Would you like to address her before I go to public comment? Absolutely. If committee member Yu would like to say something, we'd love to hear it. Thanks so much. I'm sorry for the late hand here. Want to see if we could put on the agenda for next year to form the writing subcommittee for the annual report as well. I believe you had uh, a, or had mentioned that this was possible, Mr. Chair. Yes, I, I, you know, establishing subcommittees um, don't normally need the, if unless I'm mistaken, need the um, a vote in a recommendation in the second. Um, my plan is to establish one. The vice chair, uh, based upon our guidelines, will be able to select the uh, chair and vice chair of that subcommittee. Um, my goal would be to ask for um, volunteers to also sit on that committee because my belief would be this would something that we could do uh, to a public forum to allow public participation since we will have virtually the whole year to do it. And um, that way there may be additional committee members that would wish to um, participate. At least one more that could participate and others could join the call to provide input. Wonderful, thanks for the clarification. Yep. You're welcome, thank you. So this is the moderator and at this time I am opening for public comment. If you would like to make a public comment, please click on the Q&A icon located in the lower right portion of your screen and type, I would like to make a public comment. Again, you will be provided one minute to make your comment and given a 30 second warning. At the end of your minute, your microphone will be muted. With that, our first individual is identified as Wade Laughter. Your microphone has been unmuted. Yes, thank you, Wade Laughter with House of Harlequin. I uh, would love to see the uh, the Cannabis Advisory Committee uh, be fully uh, uh, 
have the full number of members uh, asked by the governor's office uh, and that it should definitely include social equity uh, members, uh, but also uh, patient representatives. And uh, as a longtime advocate- 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, as a longtime advocate for patient access, I think it's really important that the committee have someone who represents the idea that the best way to protect public health and safety is in fact a well-regulated cannabis market, not the, re the free market that exists today. And uh, the other thing is, I think it's really important to uh, do something about the workload involved in preparing the annual report. Uh, stunning the amount of work that must. Time had been reached. Our next individual is Ray Purs. Your microphone has been unmuted. Yes, I would like to see the committee place on the agenda the status of equity fundings uh, throughout the state. As I've said before, uh, equity businesses are going through major hurdles uh, to get this funding. And I think it needs to be addressed at, uh, at the next uh, committee meeting. Thanks. Next, we have Jason Sarush. Your microphone has been unmuted. Members of the committee, my name is Jason Sarush, and I'm a policy research associate at the Public Health Institute. We would like to echo committee member CIRMAC and bring light to the recent trial court decision finding that the BCC advertising placement regulations improperly expanded the scope of permissible advertising to most of California's state and interstate highway system and is clearly inconsistent with the original cannabis advertising placement statute which specifies that a licensee shall not advertise or market on a billboard or similar advertising device located on an interstate highway or, or on a state highway which crosses the California border. Given the Cannabis Advisory Committee's previous recommendation to return to Proposition 64 language, can you agendize a point for the BCC to inform the Cannabis Advisory Committee if they will choose to revoke, which we recommend, rather than appeal that section of the regulations? Thank you. Next, we have Max Michelonis. Your microphone has been unmuted. Good morning, Max Michelonis on behalf of Flow Cannabis Co. Uh, wishing to echo and support the request by committee member Nevidal um, that provisional licensing be prioritized for a future uh, meeting and that there be a report or um, a discussion on that by licensing authorities. Um, we are coming up on a you know, tsunami of expiring provisional licenses. Uh, you know, with the statutory, the state statutory authority expiring at the end of next year and the local government CEQA exemption expiring on July 1 of next seconds. year. And without state action on this topic in 2021, we are facing a massive extinction event um, whereby a large number of licenses drop out of the regulated market. Thank you. Next, we have Sarah Armstrong. Sarah, I am not showing that I have an audio connection for you. If you would like to make a verbal public comment, you can click on your audio and video at the top and find a connection. I will circle back with you once I see that you have a connection available. Next, we do have Jackie Subek. Your microphone has been unmuted. Hi, uh, I realize I might sound like a broken record, but I believe it's really important for this committee to dig deeper into understanding how the current hours of operation restriction, which requires a closing time of 10 p.m., and that was designed specifically for retail dispensaries. What it did was it created an unintended consequence for consumption lounges by prohibiting them the ability to participate in the local nightlife, requiring them, them to close just as the night is beginning while bars, clubs, and restaurants can all maintain the freedom to remain open until 2 a.m. and deprives them a lot of revenue as well. It's very expensive to operate a lounge. Okay. So this effectively puts the lounges on an uneven playing field before they've even had a chance to get their businesses off the ground. I just encourage this committee to reconsider their position and take this up on agenda early next year so we can have an open discussion about it. Thank you. Committee chair, I do have a hand raised from a member of the public. They did not submit to make a request. Would you like me to unmute their microphone? 
Um, that's not normally our process. We usually ask them to go and use the normal process, but we don't know what conditions might result in that as we have you know, other people on the committee that have challenges from time to time with that. So why don't you um, unmute them and see if um, that is the case? And if so, we'll take their public comment. Thank you. Attendee Adiola Adepi, um, are you able to submit a request to make a public comment? Um, I had a little bit of difficulties um, with um, the system this morning, so I wasn't able to do it. All right. Um, you have one minute then for your public comment. Oh, it was very simple. Um, I wanted to make a public comment in regards to the social equity program in um, Sacramento city limits. Um, just wanted to see if there could be an actual committee um, that is composed for social equity with helping bridge the gap with resources um, and possibly looking into the funding that was given to um, Sacramento Equity as well as Agent Chamber of Commerce and see if there's any leftover funds that can go back into um, funding for social equity members to get their businesses off the ground. Next, we have Sarah Armstrong. Your microphone has been unmuted. Yes, going forward, uh, one of the biggest problems that patients have, I am Sarah Armstrong, Director of Industry Affairs for Americans for Safe Access. Going forward, one of the big problems is cannabis areas in the state simply don't have any access to medical cannabis or any kind of cannabis. If the uh, commission could take this up, start doing some research and talking about it, it might point the way to an end, at least for these problems. Thank you for your time. At this time, we do not have any additional requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? I would, thank you. You are very welcome. This feature has been closed. Um, before I close this agenda item, I would ask counsel. So, as I've said a couple times, you know, I believe I have the right to establish a committee. Um, I do know that we had a social equity subcommittee in the past, and there's been some maturity of the issue over time, including the, you know, the access to funding now. Um, is it possible for me with the agenda as currently constructed to uh, request from the committee uh, volunteers to sit on those committees or to validate that they may want to continue their position on those subcommittees. Uh, I do think that it might be also uh, interesting to have a new subcommittee in addition to um, a subcommittee for development of the annual report, have a subcommittee for legislative and regulatory or legislative, you know, monitoring uh, the state's legislative calendar so they can report back to our committee uh, when we have meetings of what legislation is moving and how we might be able to make recommendations as a committee. I don't know if that would be appropriate. So, uh, Council, could you tackle a couple sure. of those? For so, me? for today, as far as a we're discussing who would be on the subcommittees. Um, we are limited to the subcommittee on the report, but you could definitely take volunteers for that and establish that early. It is the vice chair that appoints members to the subcommittees. The chair creates the subcommittees, um, but you also do have the authority to create any subcommittees as you go forward. Um, but as far as we're asking for volunteers today, it would just be limited to the subcommittee on the report. Okay, okay. All right, well, I think um, I do want to I do want to create a new subcommittee and we can tackle who would be on it at our next meeting, but I do want a subcommittee uh, reestablish the if possible a subcommittee on, on social equity for 2021 uh, establish a um, continue our subcommittee on the drafting of 
uh, an annual report into next year with the intent of seeking volunteers and allowing the vice chair to be able to appoint those committee participants and to have a new subcommittee in 2021 that would um, follow and report to the committee any legislative and regulatory activity related specifically to cannabis. So that way we don't find ourselves at the end of the legislative cycle trying to um, make recommendations to address those. So those are the three that I can think of right away. I do believe that there is uh, a role for patients groups to play, but there's also, um, we need to relook at our subcommittee on uh, public health and safety to, to the community and youth uh, in 2021. Uh, there was a lot of work that's being done. There's a lot of un, you know, tied bows, but those are my thoughts for future agenda items. Um, again, we do have a plan to have on the agenda, the first meeting, the United Core Alliance report. Uh, and I would hope that we could have a conversation about social equity amongst the committee immediately following that report. So that would be it for me on the future meeting agenda items. With that, I'd like to uh, move on to public comment on agenda items not on the agenda or items not on the agenda. This is the moderator and at the direction of the committee, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to make a public comment, please submit. I would like to make a public comment. I will take all requests in the order they are received. We have received no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Please, thank you. You're very welcome. Well, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, again, 2020 has been a crazy year. Um, I appreciate all the work each and every one of you on the committee, staff, and public who have joined us. Um, the challenges that the year has created has also created opportunities with the use of WebEx. Uh, we have a lot of participants towards the end of 2019. We'd seen a significant dip in participation that this feature has allowed us to once again have participation, at least people um, sitting in and listening. And I would hope in 2021 as we move back to a newer normal, maybe not the normal we had before, um, that we'll be able to integrate a combination of in-person meetings and WebEx meetings. So that way we can continue to expand on the participation of the public and the consumer and as well as the industry. So that way we have a more robust conversation that addresses the concerns of those all impacted by this great opportunity. So. Thank you. Uh, have a great end of your year. May you have good health and happy holidays. Thank you. You're adjourned. This is the moderator. I